let's just get into it because I can't bother to waffle on so much. So I'm going to be using Laravel with Inertia.js and Vue.js and we're going to be using MailChimp. Now the concept is going to be very similar depending on what you know email service you use. Uh, MailChimp is one I've been using for a while. I don't have much experience with it to be honest with you um, or others so I don't know if it's particularly good or bad. It's popular. I don't know how the price varies but I'll pop links in the description to everything you need. So if we go to the marketing API docs. This is where we're gonna find all the information we need. It goes without saying you're gonna need a MailChimp account to do this. Um, I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. So let's go to this guides, this quick start section. And the first thing we need to do is generate an API key. So we go to the API section in MailChimp. So you need to be logged in obviously to do this and probably you need to create an audience, but I'm sure that will be very self-explanatory. That's not what this video is about. It's about just linking it with your Laravel web app. So let that load. It's going to take a little while because it's quite slow. So we go to API keys. You can see I was doing a couple of tests just now. Um, and it was actually, I was finding it pretty difficult to be honest with you. Um, and I'm not sure if that's because I was being stupid or it, let's be honest, it was because I was being stupid, but it was quite difficult. So I'm hoping this video will be useful to you. So you create an API key, come down to your environment file.env and we're just going to save it as MailChimp API key. Okay. So we've done that. That's what it said to do. So we'll just go through and then we need to install this client library. So PHP, because it's Laravel. I have already done this because I was just doing it two seconds ago, but I'll run the command just so you can see. It should probably say it's already there, so don't worry about it. Nothing to install. Probably cut this. All good. And I've created this MailChimp class here, which is where I'm going to put all the code and I'm going to use it from there. So let's have a look. Now, where I was going wrong just now is I was using the wrong endpoints. And this is probably obvious that to use the right endpoint, but I was having real problems with it, but I found it, did a bit of Googling and we actually need to be using this one here, add or update list member. So if you expand that, it tells you exactly what you need to use. Now, because we've already installed our SDK, which is what we just did, we can use this here. So we're just going to copy this code and paste it in. You don't need to worry about this require once, um, but just copy that. So I'm going to make a couple of functions here. So I'm going to make the first one and we're going to say create client. And in this function, I, I did just copy this, but I didn't need to. We're just going to copy this top part here. Paste that in. And then we're going to put in what we need here. So we just put our API key into our environment file. So we go env and we say MailChimp API key. And then your server prefix, you can find that here. If you go to your account and it's just this bit here, mine's US 21. So pop that in there. Again, probably worth doing an environment variable for that. So we're going to copy that MailChimp server prefix and do the same thing. So env, save that. We're actually going to return client. So what we're going to do is we're going to have another function down here. We we go public function and we're going to call it add or update list member. We're just going to use that because it will help us remember everything. Add or update list member and then we're going to copy the second part 
there. And paste that in. And now we can see we've got some parameters that we need to create. So we're gonna say list ID. And I'll show you where you can find that in a moment. Subscriber hash. Now, this is partly where I was going wrong. It says you can do an MD5 hash of the lowercase um, version of the email address. But you can also, if we come down here, just use the email address. This endpoint also accepts a list member's email address or contact ID. So we're just gonna use the email address. So we're actually just gonna say email address. And we're just gonna swap those out. Oh, list ID, should I say. So we're gonna go list ID there. And we're gonna say email address there. And we're gonna put our email address here as well. And we'll get to that bit in a moment. I'm not entirely sure why you'd want a new member to be unsubscribed, but there might be a reason for it. You can see this isn't liking it here. We can just do this. Or we can say, use MailChimp marketing and just get rid of that dash there. So we'll do it that way. Um, right, let's have a little think. So now we want to, whenever a new user is registered to our web application, we want to add them to our mailing list or do this update list member. So check if they're in there already and if they're not, add them. So if we come up to our file that handles new users, we're just gonna pop it down here. Now. There is probably a better way of doing this. You can probably do actions, um, not actions, events and listeners and all this sort of stuff, but we're just gonna whack it in here because we're just seeing how it works. So we're gonna go and we're gonna, we want to use our MailChimp class. I've already put it in there, but I'll show you. So we say use MailChimp and class, and this is the one I've created. This isn't the SDK. This is the one we've just created up here. So we're gonna say, MailChimp equals new MailChimp class. And then we wanna use the methods on that class. So we go MailChimp, add, there we go. This is a bit all over the place. I do understand that, I apologize for that. Um, and we wanna pass the, what did we wanna pass? list ID and the email address. Something I probably should have just done, which this is gonna make it really confusing because I'm all over the place, but we need to call this method here from within here to get our create client. So we're gonna say client equals this. So we're talking about this class, creates client, okay? Oops. So now we've got client there, which uses that. So we want list ID and email address. So in here, we're gonna say, get the list ID. So list ID is found in our audience. So you come to your audience, which you've created, go to settings and say audience name and defaults. It was just there. And it's called an audience ID. So it's a little bit confusing. They call it an audience ID here, but then they call it list ID. Um, yeah, I don't know why. It's a bit annoying to be honest with you, but whatever. Um, so <laughs> we pop that there and then we say email address. So we can get that from our newly created user here. So we get the user object and we access the email. Save that. Right, we might be looking okay. So what I'm thinking is, let's just create a new user, see what happens. I'm not sure about this status if new because I feel like that should be subscribed, but we'll change that if we need to. So let's go to our web app and we're gonna create a new user. Do you know what? I'm just gonna start, stop the server and start it again because it keeps on doing this weird little starting of the server again every time I change the EMV file. 
and it's causing that error up there. So hopefully that will go away now. Okay, not registered, sign up. So I'm going to use a fake email address and hopefully that doesn't break it. Um, I'm going to call it John underscore goblin at codinggoblin.com. And with a bit of luck, I'm going to hit register and it's not going to break. Okay. Okay. So now if we come over to our audience in MailChimp, you can see we've got 74 total contacts and 68 email subscribers here. If I refresh that, hopefully that goes up. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Please. Please. What do we reckon? No, it's not. It's not done that. This might be because they're set as unsubscribed. Let's go to unsubscribed. This is so weird that we would do that. I don't know for what reason you'd want to make someone unsubscribed when you're adding them. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's really weird, isn't it? So it's added them as unsubscribed, added that user as unsubscribed. So it is working. So if we change that to subscribed, and log out and create a new user. We're going to say John again inventive. And we're going to say John underscore again at codinggoblin.com. So we signed up and now we're going to go to our overview. And hopefully that goes up to 76 and 69, hopefully. And if it doesn't, then who knows? Who knows? It's quite slow. I will say that it's quite slow. Okay, 76, 69, it's gone up. So you will go down here and see, if I go to maybe manage audience, view contacts, and I'm going to scroll all down slowly so I don't. I'm um, looking at. Why am I looking at unsubscribed again? There we go. John again is now there. So that has worked. You're probably going to want some sort of setting in your web app where a user can unsubscribe from your email list. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. You can easily add that in. So you just do the reverse of that, I imagine, but there's loads of endpoints there. It's not that important really because you can unsubscribe from emails. So if you send an email via MailChimp, there'll be a link at the bottom allowing the user to unsubscribe. So they can do it that way. I am not an expert on the law regarding sending emails. So do your own research because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But that is how you go about doing that. If you want to check out the Coding Goblin web app, go and have a look. Link in the description. I'm going to quickly, while we're here, just show you how I would deploy this to a live server so you can see what that's all about. So. <clears throat> We've created that code. I'm now going to come and add those changes to my GitHub repository. So I'm going to say git add. I'm going to add all of that I've done. Git commit message is added MailChimp stuff. Git push. So that's going to go to GitHub. We're now going to come over to Cloudways. So now I'm in my Cloudways account, I'm just going to deploy via Git. So all I have to do is pull that. Now it's worth remembering you have added the MailChimp 
SDK, the marketing API SDK to your composer.json. So you need to actually go into your server and run composer install. If you don't do that, it's not gonna work and you're gonna be pulling your hair up. You also need to remember to change your environment variables on your live server. So bear in mind, we added the MailChimp API key and the MailChimp server ID or server prefix, whatever it's called. So you're gonna need to add them to your EMB file. These are the little things that catch you up. Um, and I've been there, so yeah, it might be because I'm stupid to be honest with you, but I have had a lot of grief with that stuff in the past. So we need to run composer install. And that is gonna hopefully install MailChimp marketing. It is doing that. While that is happening, let's go back to Cloudways and I need to actually add my EMV variables to my live server. So I'm gonna do that. I've already SSH'd into this. I'm gonna to have to do a lot of blurring out of this because there's a lot of sensitive information here. That's a note to myself more than you. So I'm gonna go and view and edit. Someone keeps trying to hack into my website. So can you please just stop doing that? It's really annoying. Right, um, so do you know what? We can just copy that straight over. Save, upload. Okay, that's all done. Now, if we go to the actual web app, app.codinggoblin.com. And then create a new account. And we're gonna just call it John. Should we do something else? Just, just call it Billy Bob, Billy Bob at codinggoblin.com. Hopefully it works. Now, if we go back to our contacts, 7669, hopefully that goes up to 7770. And hopefully we see Billy Bob down below. Hopefully. Can't remember what numbers I just said, but I think that's right. Let's have a look when it loads eventually. Billy Bob, there we go, subscribed. There you have it. If you are interested in Cloudways, they've got a good deal on at the moment. Uh, use the link in the description, 30% off for three months, but only until the 31st of October. If you're watching this after, the 31st of October 2024. You can still use my link, but use the code GOBLIN and you'll get 20% off for two months. Thanks for watching. Do all that YouTube stuff, like the video, subscribe to the video, tell all your friends to watch this channel. I need this, I need this. Thanks for watching, the end.